Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled, Hot Jupiter Suggests Stellar Cores Are Not Unique to the Solar System. Now an article regarding a gas giant planet, C-O-R-O-T-2b, orbiting a star at distance of 930 light years from Earth, appeared at McGill University Newsroom webpage recently. And this article was based on a Nature Astronomy article in which the odd behavior of this gas giant planet was described. The planet orbits so close to its parent star that its orbital period is less than three days. And the planet's rotation is such that the same side always faces the star. Thus, it would be expected that the hottest point on the planet would be a point facing the planet. However, a study of the object's brightness reveals that this point is offset to the side and thus does not face the star. And here's an image which um, may be similar to what is seen. So there's a bright spot, but it's not facing uh, the star. It's offset to the side. Now, if this hot Jupiter was orbiting our sun with an orbital period of three days, we can find how close it would be orbiting the sun using Kepler's third law, which basically says that the square of the period is proportional to the cube of the orbital radius. Now, using the fact that the Earth's orbital period is 365 days, here given by T sub E, and its orbital period is um, given by R equals 1 astronomical unit, then the planet's orbital radius would be given by this equation, THJ, which stands for hot Jupiter squared over T Earth squared, is equal to a h j for the hot uh, Jupiter's orbital radius cubed um, divided by the orbital radius of Earth cubed. And then we rearrange the equation to give the orbital radius of um, so this a e is actually the same as this r e, and so we can then rearrange the equation to obtain the orbital radius of the hot Jupiter, which turns out to be only 0 0.04 AU. So we use three days for each period and for Earth 365. And we can then take this fraction to the power of 2 over 3, and we obtain 0 0.04 AU. Now, this would mean that this hot Jupiter, if it was orbiting the Sun, would be inside the Sun's outer corona. As the outer corona goes out to 12 radii from the Sun, which is equivalent to a distance of 0 0.06 AU. And this is illustrated here um, in this figure. If using the Sun's diameter, which is about 0 0.01 astronomical units, and making this uh, a scale diagram uh, so that the distance from the Sun to the Earth is a hundred times that. So this would be where the Earth would be, that's one astronomical unit. Then uh, the Sun's, uh, the edge of the Sun's outer corona would be where this red mark is, which is 0 0.06 AU. And then this hot Jupiter with a three-day uh, orbital period would be inside uh, that distance there. So inside uh, the Sun's outer corona. Uh, the Sun's inner corona uh, is much smaller, of course. It only goes out to about 0.5 of the Sun's radius. So that's the inner corona. These objects are also found in the Sun's inner corona. Um, these objects um, that um, these stellar cores that we are observed in the sun's inner corona 
Um, they are found, as we can see here, is one of them in the Sun's inner corona. And we have stellar cores that are further out. So in the Sun's outer corona, we can see one of these here moving away from the Sun. And I believe that uh, this object um, in um, orbiting the star may therefore be uh, one of these stellar cores. So these Planet X, oh, I've been calling them Planet X objects, or stellar cores have been observed, as I said, in the inner and the outer corona. And of course, they cannot be planets because they are found in the inner corona, which is at a temperature of 2 million degrees Kelvin, and planets would be vaporized. Uh, with a temperature as high as that. So these are stars. These are old stars which seem to connect magnetically to the Sun. They drain energy from the Sun through this connection. I've written a lot about them. Um, so as detailed in the article uh, 132 survey of Orion Nebula, Jupiter and Saturn may be stars. There is actually evidence that Jupiter and Saturn may in fact be very old stellar cores and older than the stellar cores now found in the Sun's corona. So they have lost the ability to connect magnetically to the Sun and thus uh, regain the ability to rejuvenate because they're not able to absorb energy from the Sun as the younger stellar cores that are now found in the sun's inner and outer corona are able to do and uh, i believe this is why they have settled into a regular orbit and look like jupiters so it's not surprising that um, stellar cores may look like hot jupiters these are the stellar cores that are still young enough to be in the sun's corona um, of course um, these uh, objects that look like Jupiter uh, would l actually look or have the same appearance, which is the striped appearance that Jupiter is well known for. And indeed, stellar cores in the Sun's corona have been observed to have stripes. They have the striped appearance, which makes them look like Jupiter. This particular one is about four times larger than the Earth. So the stellar cores observed in the inner solar system um, in addition to the striped appearance, also I have a region on this surface which does not coincide with a point facing the sun, just like this hot Jupiter was observed uh, to, uh, to have a, a bright spot that's not uh, on its surface, that's not facing the star. And the blue stellar core, which was photographed through a telescope, had a lighter blue region, which we can see here. This, it's lighter blue, this region, which may indicate that um, there's more light coming from it, or um, it, it may therefore be hotter because uh, hotter surfaces em usually emit brighter light than cooler surfaces. But we see a region around it that may also be emitting light but uh, is not as hot or as bright because this is a darker blue. But this is not facing the sun. The region facing the sun is this region over here where we see this magenta colored um, gaseous plasma collecting. And it's obviously connecting through this connection, uh, which must be magnetic, that the object is making with the sun. So this is that the region that is facing the sun. This brighter region is not facing the sun. It's offset to the side, just like on the hot Jupiter. And this uh, photograph, um, this one is from July, this one is from November, taken from the Earth. We see an object that's also bright on one side, but as we can see, this bright region is not facing the Sun. In order for it to face the Sun, we'd have to tilt this object downwards towards the Sun. So this object is also offset, seems to be pointing, um, well, facing um a spot above the sun. So the same thing is happening with this object. Um, so um, it seems that um, these, the stellar cores uh, that are in the sun's corona have this ability to connect magnetically to the sun and uh, rejuvenate 
and uh, uh, these hot stellar cores may in fact do, be doing the same thing. And it's possible that the blue stellar core, which um, the image shown in figure 6 was taken in July, is actually the same object uh, that um, was photographed here in November and that it has gained, um, regained uh, an increasing ability to emit light. As you can see, this region is now much brighter than this region here. And it's surrounded by uh, another region that's not as bright. So um, this suggests that um, it's not just uh, hot because um, of the sun heating that area, but that the object is actually regaining its ability to produce light through an internal energy transformation process, which is what we would expect of a star. And so in this case, the object seems, uh, or the objects in the sun's corona, uh, the stellar core seem to gain the ability to ionize their outer surface, which in turn may lead to photons being given off. And this electric potential may also give it the ability to have cold fusion reactions, which need to be aided by an electrical potential, as the surface temperature would not be hot enough to allow thermonuclear reactions. Now, the fact that the stellar cores in the solar system have bright spots which do not face the sun, just like the hot Jupiter featured in the article in Nature, Astronomy, suggests that the bright spot on this hot Jupiter, which is 930 light years away, may be due to this also being a star going through a rejuvenation process, similar to the stellar course in the sun's corona. And um, the fact that this hot Jupiter orbiting this uh, faraway star uh, rotates to, um, so that the same side always faces the sun is actually quite interesting. And this may suggest that the stellar cores in the sun's corona uh, may also do the same in order um, for the object to always have the same side facing the sun. This would mean that it would also have a three-day rotational period. So this uh, may be uh, what is happening with the stellar cores in the sun's outer uh, corona. They may be orbiting the sun and with a very um, um, uh, high speed and therefore um, a very high rotational uh, period. And they may then be also uh, rotating with uh, the same period, that is, they make one complete rotation in three days. So, in conclusion, uh, the hot Jupiter, C-O-R-O-T-2b, is very likely to be a similar object to the blue stellar core and therefore an old star, or a stellar core which, like the ones that have come to the Sun, uh, is making a magnetic connection with its star and absorbing energy from it, which then allows it to restart emitting light. And this shows that stellar cores or old stars invading uh, star systems and going into a star's corona and absorbing energy from it and rejuvenating is not unique to our solar system. There seem to be more of them out there. And here are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.